Hey guys, welcome back to the Hybrid Athlete channel. I am Paul Rimmer and I am here to talk to you about CrossFit and ultra marathon running. Okay, so this was a question asked to me um, through a, a trail and ultra running group that I was on. Basically, the question was, how do I train for an ultra marathon whilst also maintaining performance in CrossFit? So before I get into this, I wanna just caveat it with a few things. First one is what I'm talking about here is someone who's trying to maybe run their first ultra marathon, maybe up to 50K, whilst still maintaining their current level of CrossFit training. And some of the things to kind of watch out for and opportunities that we have so that we um, we can use our CrossFit training to carry over to our endurance work and maybe even potentially our endurance work to carry back into our CrossFit training. So when we're thinking about structuring programs together, particularly if we've got two sort of separate sports, if you will, the first thing we want to look for is opportunities for congruency. So if we think about CrossFit, we've got lots of strength work, good carryover to endurance. We've got core work, core stability work. We're going to have a lot of good met metabolic conditioning, a lot of high intensity work in there as well. So we should have a good engine, good energy system. So our base level of fitness should be quite good if we're doing a well-rounded CrossFit style program. Now, obviously, different gyms have different biases. So I'm going to talk very generally here as well. But some of the things to watch out for when we're thinking about our CrossFit program is what I'm going to call it our fit principle, okay? So if we're looking to smash two training programs together or, or merge two training programs or have a balanced hybrid athlete program, we have to think about frequency, okay? So how many sessions a week are we committing to one thing and how important is that frequency to our performance? So with CrossFit, obviously, we've got frequency of different types of sessions, frequency of metabolic conditioning type stuff, frequency of gymnastic stuff, frequency of strength work, technique work, so on and so forth. Obviously, with endurance, if we're trying to train to for an ultra endurance event, yes, we might be wanting to run three, four times a week. But if we haven't got the, the capacity to handle that training frequency, something's got to give. Now, one of the things I would say is initially that if you are, say, training CrossFit four or five days a week and you bolt a run onto the end of that, like a low intensity, long run, say starting at, say, five to 10 kilometers, and then you're adding in, you know, 10 to 20% of distance per week on specific terrain, nice low intensity, as long as your body can handle that and you're recovering before your next training week, then that's fine. So you can, you can just add on one run, but you can't add on a full running program. Now, one of the things that there's an opportunity to look at here, though, is the type of exercise that we're doing in our CrossFit program. So if you're doing lots of bike intervals or rowing intervals or ski erg intervals, what we might do is swap some of those interval sessions, those higher intensity bouts, with maybe running. Because although some adaptations we get in our cardiovascular system are systemic, there are localized muscle tissue adaptations. I'm not going to go too much into that here but you can't just ignore those running muscles just because we're doing loads of high intensity work. Bike won't carry over perfectly into running. So there's an opportunity there with the type of exercise we're doing. So in our fit principle frequency, how many sessions we're doing and how much can we dedicate to running, if at all possible. We've got our type and can we manipulate the type of exercise we're doing within the benefits of CrossFit that still cross over so into our endurance running. So it might be that we do some, like I say, some CrossFit related running that carries over into our endurance running. The key variable in all of this though, and one of the, the bigger barriers I would say for CrossFit athletes is, it's not the frequency of training, it's the intensity of the training as well. It's all high intensity work, very little low zone two work. So I actually think for a lot of CrossFit is backing off some of the higher intensity work and adding in a bit of zone two lower intensity work would be beneficial. So I think actually an ultra running program done properly with the right conditioning and the right intensities, the right effort levels, could be beneficial if perhaps CrossFitters were maybe willing to just drop away a little bit from maxing out on their, you know, their wads, their high intensity wads. Um, but again, you know, that's a, it's a different conversation for a different time. So basically, if we then have our frequency and our intensity of our CrossFit really high, we can use the fatigue from those sessions to make sure that one long run a week, and remember, all we're trying to do is complete an ultra endurance run, to then say, okay, look, I'm running on tired legs, but you know, I'm getting that work done. I'm getting those specific adaptations that I'm only going to get from running, as in tissue specific stuff. So, in terms of not just the the tissue specific adaptations, in terms of the cardiovascular adaptations, sorry, cardiovascular adaptations, endurance adaptations, but also in terms of like you know those hip stabilizers, ankles, knees 
all of that stuff when you're running on an even terrain, you're going up things, down things, left, right, jumping over puddles, all that stuff requires that level of specificity, not just in terms of running, but in terms of terrain. The problem becomes is as we increase our endurance mileage, there comes a point at which that is going to, even if we're doing that on tired legs, then that's going to carry back into the next week's training. Okay, So if we're already tired from doing a big, heavy, high frequency, high intensity CrossFit type block, then we bolt a run on the end of that. We might get away with it for a few weeks and then still recover for you know, so we can leap, we can feed back into the next training we would get enough recovery. But the chances are at some point, if our if our distances get long enough, like adding in, you know, doing a 10k might be fine, but if we get to 15, 20, 25, 30k runs, just bolted on to the end of a CrossFit program, that's gonna be a problem for some people. And then we're gonna get into this kind of fatigue cycle. At that point, this is where we really need to be a bit clever. And we need to say, okay, what in our CrossFit program? is becoming a little bit, um, maybe not superfluous, but can we just back off? Can we back off the frequency of the sessions there we're doing, which we could then dedicate more to recovery? Or are there sessions there that we're doing where we could back off the intensity a little bit, just so that we're not carrying that fatigue into our endurance work, and then that endurance fatigue carries back in to the other side of it. So we're adding in recovery as a part of that. Now, that might mean that our CrossFit performance doesn't increase anymore, although I would suspect that backing off certain intensities and adding in some more zone two lower intensity stuff would benefit performance as much as that might be hard for some people to grasp but I do think there's some there's some there's some method to that madness and I'll probably talk about that separately anyway it's not really the, the answering the question at this point but if we can then increase the amount of endurance volume we're doing but reduce the volume and training load through frequency and intensity manipulations of our CrossFit, we might not improve our CrossFit very much, but we can at least maintain it. Remember, we don't have to do as much to maintain performance as we do to increase it. So that's where you might say, let's say you're doing a 10 week ultra marathon training prep, starting at 10K, adding in two and a half K to that long run every week over 10 weeks. So you're working up to 35, 40K for then say, that's your last run before a 50K trail ultra. You might find that up to week sort of five and six, everything's fine, and then you're starting to get this feedback, and then we reduce our frequency and our intensity of the specific sessions or across our overall training week, but we're still ticking those boxes, but we're just trying to not hammer ourselves. We're looking to maintain performance. You know, if we're doing 60, 70% of our overall CrossFit volume with deliberate intent and with the right amount of effort, you will still maintain CrossFit performance. You might also, at some point though, if you really struggle with this or if you've got a, you've got a program where um, you really do need to push frequency and intensity in your CrossFit, another alternative way to do this, and this becomes um, more important, particularly if we're gonna like really be pushing ourselves in CrossFit sessions, maybe we're doing a class or a group thing where we don't have a choice in what we're doing as much, maybe we're not getting individual programs or maybe we've got a coach that isn't, let's say, as forgiving as they might be. What we might need to do is have weeks where if we're just getting programmed in a CrossFit box, we might have to go in and do like a really hard week's training. We don't wanna drop those sessions, but then we might block away our weeks and particularly if we're going to start pushing this ultra endurance stuff in those later weeks we might have to have easier weeks of crossfit where we might just go in and do one or two sessions and have more heavy endurance blocks but if we want to take our endurance work seriously we really want to not just complete a 50k but maybe distances beyond that and we want to do it well one thing we can do is we can have big high intensity high volume you know crossfit week and then the week after that we can have a low intensity or low volume CrossFit week, so maybe just one or two CrossFit sessions, and that becomes more of a running week where you've then got those longer runs built in with maybe some intervals as well. So you've got a bit more of a running program week and a CrossFit specific program week, and then you can then alternate between those blocks over time. And then it might just be in those last couple of weeks before an ultra marathon, you then back off your CrossFit volume to get those last few longer runs in, and it might be if you've got a CrossFit competition, but you want to keep the ultra distances in there, or that's over the horizon. It's it's coming up on the horizon, but you know a little bit out off, you know, just a little bit over the curve. The um, then we might say, right, well, this few weeks now, I'm going to do my long runs every three or four weeks, but I'll do three intense weeks of CrossFit stuff, 
and then have a deload from that and then go into the endurance work. But all the time, we still need to be aware that each one of those is accumulating its own specific types of fatigue that we need to monitor. So just to summarize, when we're starting out, if you've never done any ultra training, ultra running before, and you want to get up to kind of a, you know, a 50K ultra run, you can initially start, if you've got the energy, if your CrossFit program isn't too demanding, by simply using the CrossFit fatigue across the course of the week, to then add on a little longer run, nice low intensity, zone two, being able to talk whilst you run tight run. I think that makes sense. After a few weeks of adding on the mileage though, that's also going to accumulate fatigue, which is going to negatively feed back through to the next week's training or the next block's training, which is then going to mean that we then need to start thinking about are we willing to sacrifice and reduce the frequency and intensity of our CrossFit sessions and just still be tired doing the runs, but it's affecting our CrossFit. But if we want to maintain the CrossFit sessions, how are we going to then reduce either the frequency of those sessions or the intensity or a little bit of column A, column B to make sure that we're getting the most out of those sessions. So it's, you know, it's more about the quality of work than the quantity of work. And then also, can we then start to look at the types of conditioning we're doing in CrossFit that then have the better the best carryover to our endurance work. And then finally, as we progress to maybe ultra, ultra distances, super long ultra, something's got to give, okay? Now, that might mean that we have this sort of block model, high intensity CrossFit stuff for a few weeks, with maybe one long run dot, dotted every three or four weeks when you're deloading or reducing volume, deload is probably not the right word, but you're, you're reducing volume from your CrossFit work, and then that would be like a CrossFit block, but you're still keeping the long runs in there. But then if you were then peaking up towards an ultra marathon event going above 50k, or well, that volume at which the fatigue starts to feed back in a negative cycle, then what you would do is say, okay, right now I'm going to go into maintenance CrossFit fit mode, reduce the volume, reduce the intensity, keep ticking the boxes, you know, maintaining strength, maintaining performance, but without pushing it. And that's when you then use that extra energy, that extra recovery reserve, the extra adaptive energy that we've got to really then increase the frequency and intensity of certain running sessions as well as the mileage as well so hopefully that answers the question guys um it's not a not a simple question to answer but hopefully that kind of gives you some insight that you can't just sandwich to a running program and a crossfit program together at some point something's got to give but i think to get up to a reasonable distance of ultra running it doesn't necessarily have to have a detrimental effect on crossfit performance does that mean i think it's it's possible to keep improving crossfit performance i think to a point and i think endurance work can help with that but again at some point we have to monitor our performance make tweaks and changes and figure out across the course of our competition year what we're going to focus on if we're going to use that more block model towards the end right guys hopefully that's been useful if you like that if there was anything in there that you you've got any thoughts on or you want more questions on yourself please post them in the comments below and again, really appreciate you for watching. Um, if you could give that a like and a subscribe, that would really help me grow the channel. So yeah, have a great training week, you wonderful humans. Um, and hopefully see you in the not too distant future with some more questions and answers and hopefully some help. But yeah, have a good week, guys. Take it easy. Peace.